So I'm out here at the West End Gun Club. It's just before the crack of dawn, it's about 0545. Saturday, May 7th. I actually haven't been out at the range in quite some time, just been busy. Uh, it's been over a month, I think, about six weeks since I've been here at the range, when I was doing my 55 grain 223556 ammo testing, uh, which was actually a popular article. Apparently uh, it caught, it, it got some a lot of views because it got spread around to various uh, minor news or gun blogs. So that was pretty cool. But anyway, I came out to test a new rifle I acquired at Remington 700 Police Model. Um, it's just brand new and I need to get an initial zero. I'm gonna try to chrono test today. It rained last night. If you can see in the sky, it's cloudy, but hopefully it'll hold up and I can bring the chrono out and um, just get some initial testing so I can handle a little bit more ammo when I get after I'm done today. So right now I'm using the public firing line. This is probably the part of the range that I rarely go to. It goes out to 100 yards, or 100 meters rather. So this is where a lot of people shoot simply because uh, they like to prefer to shoot off benches, unlike the back ranges, which are all bays. So anyway, I fired my first three rounds. I haven't chronoed yet, just because I'm trying to get an initial 50 yard zero. The LTEC turrets on the Vortex scope that I'm using, the 4.5 to 27 by 56 EBR 2C MRAD, was pretty easy to set up. I loosened up the turrets to adjust the LTEC uh, uh, to, to set the zeros correctly. And all I did was come over two full radians on the elevation, I think, and one full radian on the um, windage. And it was pretty much spot on at 50. So I'm going to take it out to 100 when these guys are done.
So I'm pretty much done shooting today at the range. What I initially did was get a 50 yard no wind zero, elevation zero as well, just to safely get everything going so I can set my chrono up. So once I took the target outside the 100 yards, I won the chrono test with factory ammo to get a baseline out of this gun with factory ammo. So I shot the federal gold medal match 175 grain. That was shooting roughly 2660, 2670 feet per second. But this is that group there, five shots. Then I wanted to test some 41 grains of AR comp. It's a brand new powder I haven't used before. It's been out for a few years now, but my primary powder has been Reloader 15. Anyway, I picked up a couple of pounds of AR comp. And so I loaded 41 grains based off of some of the data that was published by Alliant Powder. And so without any adjustments on the elevation, I shot this group. I came up 0.3 mil rads to shoot this group with the same 14 grains of Aero Comp and 175 grain Sierra Match King. And so I probably need to cover a little bit more, but I'm going to keep my, uh, my uh, zero stop elevation zero right here, and I can still come up if I need to. I want to have a little bit leeway uh, with my zero stop elevation zero, simply because I want to be able to come back down if I need to, assuming it shoots high. Because at the range I'm at in West End Gun Club, we're actually a little higher elevation in today's cold weather, so it's I have some variance. So I need to have at least a little bit of a drop in elevation if I need to. Even though the, if you set the zero stop correctly, you still get uh, a half mil rad of down adjustment. But I want to have a full mil rad of mil adjustment, so this should be safe right now. So I'm going to try shooting the 40. I'm going to try loading more 41 grain air comp which is pushing around 2670 feet per second, roughly the same as the 170, uh, the federal gold medal match. I might bump it up a little bit to 41.2 or 41.4 to see if I can get to the 2700 range uh, as far as feet per second, muscle velocity. Uh, but I'm gonna also wanna test in a hotter weather because right now it's 53 degrees, roughly to 55 degrees right now with the sun coming out. So I'm not sure how well AR Comp will perform in higher temps, like we hit 75 to 100 degrees. The new rifle I was coming to zero today, the West End Gun Club, is this Remington 700 Police model. I, I'm going to blog about this whole project, but basically I've been trying to get back into some precision rifle shooting. I have a Savage 10 FP, which I haven't shot in several years. I, had, I bought that back in 2003, I think. It's in 308. But I kind of wanted to make a modern precision bolt rifle and most of the precision bolt rifles now that you see coming out are kind of based on of detachable uh, box magazines and so to go that route I wanted to go AICS granted there are a bunch of other uh, chassis manufacturers out there now but AICS seems to be the most widely supported I mean you can find those you can find those stocks at a lot of vendors now it's not truly a custom stock anymore it's pretty mainstream so with that being said, I decided to go with the Remington 700 Action because that's what the chassis are primarily made for. They do make them for Savages, and I was really tempted to buy a new Savage. The problem with the AICS chassis for the Savage is it's designed for the newer Savage models. If you don't know, the Savage 10, 110 Action, it's kind of a universal action, except Savage made some serious changes or significant changes to the action screws basing. So the action screws on my model, which is pre-2006, I think are like 4.6 inches apart. I'm get, I might be getting these numbers wrong, but the newer ones after 2006, those action screws are 4.4 inches apart. So I can't use an AICS chassis with my Savage. So that meant if I wanted to use an AICS chassis, I had to get a new gun. Do I want to go Savage again or do I want to go Remington 700? And I weighed it all out, and I said, you know what, I'm probably just going to go Remington 700 simply because it just has more support. I do like Savage, and I'm probably going to rebarrel my Savage action myself because it's so easy to rebarrel a Savage. But that being said, the Remington 700 has a lot more parts. You can have a lot more gunsmiths you can work on it. And so I think I just decided to go Remington 700 route. So that's why I went with this 700 police model. Uh, that I had I was weighing this or the 5R, and granted, the 5R probably shoots a little bit more accurate. I'm not sure; it's all debatable. But the 700 police model 308 it gets me up and running quickly at a lower at a low cost, a fairly low cost, I would say, thousand um, dollars for the rifle, and then 
the scope, the Vortex Optics, 4.5 to 27 by 56. Uh, this is the Razer HD Gen 2. This was 2,500 bucks, so I spent most of the money on the optics. And then I run, I'm running the Badger Ordnance 20 minute base, steel base, and then I'm running Seekins Precision, the one inch, uh, quote, high rings. And that gave me adequate scope spacing uh, as far as the objective bill on the barrel. And then I added a trigger tech trigger and I hadn't planned on doing a new trigger on this. I was going to shoot the stock trigger, but Brownells sent out an email with some new products the day I was going to order or like shortly close to the day I was going to order the Badger base. And they had these new trigger tech triggers I hadn't heard about. So I did a little bit of research on the trigger tech and I said, you know what? That looks pretty cool. Let me just stack it on my order with the base since they had a coupon at Brownells if you spent more than X amount of dollars. So I got that and I dropped the trigger in and it seems to function pretty well. It's right now it's set just under two pounds. I would say like an ounce or two ounces under two pounds and it breaks very well. I mean, it's, I, there's no creep whatsoever and it's a single stage and I'm very, I'm so used to double st or two stage triggers, but this, this single stage trigger actually functions pretty well. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting used to it and I think I'll run this trigger for now uh, versus the CG Jackson trigger, which I do run on my Elysio gun, which is a two stage. So I think I can get used to a single stage trigger as long as it's light enough. The one thing I like about two stage triggers is that even though you have like a heavy trigger, that, that second stage is gonna run really light. And so in a sense, you have a light trigger as opposed to a single stage, which you're running, you have to run safely. Two pounds is pretty much cutting it. I mean, a lot of guys will run one and a half pounds and one pound is just very border, you know, that's just beyond the point of where I would run on a field gun. So just under two, two pounds, trigger's breaking well. I did the groups this morning and I, I'm right now, I'm pretty happy with the gun. Uh, future right now, I need to, I need to develop more loads. I think I'm gonna stick with the 41 grains that I showed you earlier of those, uh, the groups that I shot, the velocity seem okay. Today was about 50 degrees, just under 55 degrees. When I try it in hotter weather, I'll see if those 41 grains of AR comp and the 175 grain Match King, if it runs any faster. But hopefully there's not gonna be much as far as speed difference. I do wanna get beyond 2700. I'd like to get to 2700, 2700 feet per second be nice. I'm, I'm right under that, maybe 2680 with the 41 grains of AR comp. So maybe that's gonna be satisfactory. I would have hoped a little bit faster on a 26 inch barrel, but I guess it's gonna be okay as long as it shoots accurately. And I'm gonna test it at 600 when I go to Pendleton, hopefully in two weeks. We'll try it at a three by 600 MR match, or mid range match. But that's pretty much the rifle I was shooting today. Again, Remington 700 police model with the HS precision stock, it came with it. I have a Trigger Tech Trigger. The Vortex Optics Razor HD Gen 2, 4.7 or 4.5 to 27 by 56 millimeter. It's got the EBR2C MRAD reticle. I got MRAD adjustments. And on with that, it's just the Badger Ordnance 20 minute steel base with the Seekins Precision uh, aluminum base. So that's pretty much for the range, my range vlog. To, um, this is a very short range trip. I, I mean, I was here for a few hours, but I didn't fire many rounds, maybe off the top of my head, 30, roughly 40 rounds. So it was just all getting a zero and then development. As far as why I haven't been shooting lately, again, it's been time. I haven't had time to come out. And the weekends where I did have time, the range was just inaccessible as far as uh, they were running matches, so I couldn't get to a bay. And then the weather was bad too. I mean, it was really windy uh, past few weekends. So today was actually really good. I thought it was gonna rain, but it's actually quite dry and the road is dry surprisingly enough considering it rained a lot last night or yesterday. So today was a good day. Um, I had mentioned my 55 grain ammo test. That was my last vlog. And that was actually pretty popular. It got a lot of views. It got, the link got spread around a little bit and it seems like a lot of people were interested in 62 grain. I hadn't planned on doing it, but considering that the 55 grain article did well, I'm going to do a 62 grain test. And I actually did order ammo, the M855 slash SS109 uh, ammo design or uh, criteria or whatever. So I'm gonna shoot um, M855, M855 or XM855. And I've got some clones of that, including the IMI. Uh, I think the PMC and a few other brands.
So when I get a chance, I'll do that. A lot of people complain that I only shot my uh, 55 grain test at 50 yards with a red dot. And then they were calling me out like, oh, yeah, your flyers shouldn't be discounted uh, if you don't know they were flyers. And, yes, I, I've, maybe it wasn't clear, but I did know I pulled a couple shots, and there were a couple shots that were called off because of wind. I knew I, I lifted them, I shot them high, or I drifted them. But I didn't spot every shot after I took it. I just shot the string, and then I then didn't bother to look through the spotting scope after that. Usually when you shot call, if you're going to call flyers, you're going to shoot, shot your, call your shot after, right when you break the shot, then you're going to spot it in the scope and then identify, yes, my call, my call was correct. I drifted it, you know, nine ring at one o'clock, or I drifted it, you know, hit 10, I hit the ring of the 10, like the line at eight o'clock. You know, you'll do those kinds of calls, but I didn't do that. But I knew in my head that I had drift, I, I had, you know, missed a couple shots that I called them that were going to be off. Anyway, so I'm going to try to shoot my 62 grain test with my SPR. I'm going to shoot that at 100 yards with my SPR, which is a scoped. It's a scoped rifle. I have a uh, Vortex. I think I have a two and a half to eight X or the two, oh, sorry, a two and a half to ten. Uh, the Viper PST. It's a FFP reticle. I'll try to shoot that at 100 yards, and then I'll also try to get the Chrono tests out of a 16 inch barrel. My SPR is an 18 inch barrel. I'll try to do both 18 inch uh, chrono test, accuracy test, and a 16 inch test, but I'll still shoot the 16 with my red dot. And stringing off of that, I'm also, I also plan on doing a 77 grain test, considering the 77 grain is technically the, the ammo I shot the most for the longest time. Uh, it's, I shot 77 grain ammo in my service rifle for competition. So I know my standard load. For those that don't know, it's a 24 grain Reloader 15 with 77 grain Match Kings or Nasser Custom Competition or Lapua Cenars. Any 77 grain, a quality 77 grain with the 24 grains of Reloader 15 is what I use in a Lake City case with either CCI BR4 primers or a Wolf SRM, the Magnum primer. And that shoots really well out of all my guns. Coincidentally, all my guns are all my... Uh, my accuracy guns, my match grade guns, are going to be white oak barrels. So they, they run a 223 wild chamber, a wheel chamber. And I like the way they cut their chambers. It seems to shoot the ammo that I, that I developed for it well across the board. And all four barrels that I have, or I had, they all shoot that same exact load shot perfectly in that. So since I have a good baseline hand load, I'm going to shoot them against the... Some, I'm going to try to get my hands on Black Hills Red Box 5.56 grain ammo, which is technically civilian, the civilian version of what is um, known as M262, MK262 Mod 1. I, I don't know if I can get my hands on true MK262. Some of the, some friends of mine in the, in the uh, military can get it. I know whether it's legal or not, I mean, if they're issued to it from their teams, they can do with it what they please then I can get my hands on it. But I mean, I'm not going to acquire it illegally. I'll try to get it through, through you know, legal means. If I can get my hands on it, I do. If I don't, then oh well. But I'll try to get my hands on the Black Hills Red Box, the 5.56 commercial version, the Red Box. Um, get my hands on the Razor Core. I actually did order the Razor Core one. And um, Federal Gold Medal Match, technically that's not, you know, MK262, but I'm trying to test uh, a wide variety of 77 grain 223 ammo. So that's going to be the next one. So I'll do 62 grain and then 72, or 77 grain when I get a chance. Again, it's all time whether I can get out to the range on a good day when it's optimal for me to do these kinds of tests, whether it's like no interruptions and whatnot. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to head out of here. Again, it's kind of a boring range vlog, uh, but that's kind of an update of what's been going on with me and shooting and what I plan in the very near future. And then um, this gun. So the next time I'm going to vlog, maybe this week, uh, next early, I'm going to hit the range. Maybe this Thursday, I'm going to take. I have to take a day off. So next Thursday, I'll probably come out of the range and hopefully have more loads developed for this. Definitely going to have the Camp Pendleton for a mid-range match sometime in two weeks, and that AR match that was held at Burrow Canyon. They're doing another one, so I plan on going out there, which is the same weekend as that uh, Pendleton match. So hopefully some shooting in the month of May. Hopefully we'll get that going. Anyway, until then, today is May 7th. Yeah, May 7th, Saturday, 2016.
Hey, you mind if we run these out real quick? Go ahead. 